So, hello everybody. Today I have a completely different topic than usual. It's about tape decks. I got myself a pretty weird present, which might look like a CD player, but it's not. It's actually a tape deck. So you can record on tape and you can play back on tape. I will show you the details a little bit later on. But first, I wanted to go into the main topic is can I use a pretty simple old tape deck for tape compression and saturation and not your more Porsche Revox or Fostex recording tapes from back in the day? Because why the hell did I get this for my Christmas present? Because I copied back in the days some cassettes with my band recordings to CDs or the first CD burners. And sadly, lots of them were not readable anymore and the CDs were broken. I was really annoyed about this uh, around Christmas time, so I wanted to do that again. And I was really surprised to find out that these cassettes were about now 30 years old and were stored in a wet and hot place. Still worked really nicely, but that's not the topic. So I was wondering, can I use this tape deck as well for tape compression and saturation instead of a plug-in? So let's simply give this a go. So I have here a bit session open and I put here a loop which is a drum loop from the Bitwig library and it's a uh, yeah let's give it a listen So it's a pretty clean sounding drum recording and I wanted to see if I can spice this up with some compression and distortion from a tape. So this first channel is going here to the tape deck. You already see it. The input is coming in. You normally you did not want to go into the red because if you go into the red, there is then some distortion and also tape compression coming in. So back in the days, you did not want to have that. So you need to adjust here the input. You see you can get more and you can get less again and around I'm not sure if you can see it around two. It's okay, the setting. And the idea is here to crank that up and to see how the sound changes. And this is what we're gonna do. So it's playing back now here and we start now recording. Here we go, by the way, I'm not using any noise removal like Dolby B or C. I tried that before and it was not big of a difference and we want to have noise here in this experiment as well. So let's start recording at two and I will then now unmute it. Let's have it running for some seconds. Mute it again and let's crank it up to three and record a bit again. Let's mute it again. Let's crank it up to four. I see this will be a very interesting video. <laughs> and we're getting pretty much in the red again. Let's mute it again and let's go crazy with five. And final one, let's really crank this up to six. This should really already max it out. So you could also really fully distort it, but I think we still want to have a bit of a useful signal. But anyway, we could just give it a go, go really up here now. Yeah, let's go full blown. Or let's go, let's say eight, let's say eight. That's nearly maxed out. <laughs> I'm really curious how this will sound. Okay, let's stop that. Let's rewind. So you needed to rewind the tape. It need to move back to the start of the tape. Already done. And we have now another channel where I can record from the tape deck. And let's just start recording. And let's also start here the playback. You see, there was also some noise on the tape, it seems. So we're starting pretty soft. So what I will do now is split that up so we can better compare the different recordings. 
I chopped it up to the different parts. So we have here from top to bottom, we have the raw signal. Then we have the one we started with the input of two, as it should be the recording. Then we crank it up to three, four, five, six, and finally also to eight, which made it pretty crazy. And I tried here to align the volume a little bit so they do not sound different because they're just louder. And let's give it a listen. So this is the pure signal. This is a normal tape recording. You can already hear a bit of the tape. I think you can clearly hear now the saturation kicking in at three. Let's hear four. Not so much of a difference here. Five. Six. Clearly here now distortion and now let's hear the full blown eight. Yeah, this is <laughs> maybe some people like this, but I think that's too much. So let's maybe maybe five is pretty nice. And let's now compare five to the raw signal. So here you clearly hear the difference if you go from the extremes. Maybe go back to eight. Yes. So I think four and five is something I, I really like and it makes it really crunchy and more dirty. And I think this is something that can really get useful if you put it a bit to the max. I want to give you also some tips if you also want to get a tape deck. But first, let's show you the sliding in and out of the tape. That's a really cool thing. Isn't that nice? <laughs> if you're an old guy like me and used to deal with tapes, it's really fun to see something like this, but in, instead of the other mechanism where you just had to press it in. Okay, and if you somehow think also about getting one, so how did I look for one? I also noticed that you can get some new tape decks as well, but they are insanely priced. So for example, there are two models from TEAC and they're cost around five, 600 euros. And it was something I was clearly not wanted to invest. So I looked into what you can get at the used market and it seemed the used market somehow stops at around 2000 something when the tape decks were just dead and everybody was just getting CD players. And I found a very interesting website. It's actually in German, but I think also for non-German readers, it's easy to to translate. It's called Hi-Fi Wiki and it basically has everything you can get from Hi-Fi. And there is also here these product categories where you can go, I think it's on a second page, you can get Cassetten decks is a German word for tape deck. So you see there are nearly 3000 entry for tape decks. It's really insane. And what I did during my holidays was checking out what are the different series from the tape deck manufacturers and what are the most posh used ones. So the latest releases and the most nicest ones which you can get now for insane cheap price currently. So I got this really nice tape deck for around 90 euro. I saw it mostly it's around 160 or something and you can get it cheaper but you need to look a little bit but there are also other models which work fine. This one was also serviced as the seller said and as it really works nicely I think that was really the truth. So you need to be careful a little bit. Some things were out with these tape decks and you might get a fall one so better check for if it's really in a good condition and something like this can really get you some ideas what to get you just need to check for the higher numbers and the latest releases and it's nice diving into these things yeah and I think for a really cheap price you can even cheaper than a similar plug-in for tape simulation you can get a really incredible thing which can give you some nice sounds what do you think about it tell me down in the comments and if you got one tell me which one and if you like it it and most of all make some funky music